and welcome to another episode of Motors and Beats. Today we're getting the finish of the car taken care of. I've already had the touch-up paint done. I had a couple really small dents popped out with the paintless dent removal. And I'm on my way to Triple C Coatings and Tent where they're going to put on a two-year ceramic coating. My wife and I took a drive over to Houston, Texas to trade cars. I know you've seen in the background of my videos before, we have Volvos. That's kind of our, our thing. We, we love them. We've had four of them now. We had an old XC90. It was a 2005 model and we had it for about four years, sold it. And then we more recently had a 2018 XC90 and a 2021 S60 sedan. And I was driving the S60 for work mostly. You know, I travel a lot, as you guys know. I put lots of miles on this car now. And my wife was using the XC90. Well, given that we had three cars and as crazy as the car market was recently, we decided we would become a two-car family again. So we opted to sell Rachel's white 2018 XC90 and just have her drive the S60. And that lasted all of about six months and it was too small for her. The kids being in the back seat, that's just too close. You know, she needed more space for things and that was just really impractical having just cars. So we drove to Houston and traded the S60 for another XC90. This time it's a 2017, it's not white and I don't yet know the name of this color. It's a gray that looks slate blue in some light. It looks like it has a green tint under bright LED lights. It's a really pretty color and she is as happy as she can be. She has her car back is what she says. While we were in Houston though, after we picked up the car, we stopped by a really great barbecue joint. Check this out. C is a dealer of 
IGL coatings. That's like the Kenzo products and Quartz, Quartz Plus. So in my case, I have Quartz, and here's the little card that shows what all is uh, is coated right there. We have the finish itself, the windshield. What else? Windows, trim. Beautiful, beautiful work. The details for all the different types of coating you can find on IGL's website. Look up Kenzo IGL Coatings and take a look at what they have to offer. As far as if you happen to be in the area, South Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, somewhere around there, I want to take advantage of Triple C Coatings and Mr. Justin Coltrane's services. Check him out, Triple C Coatings on Instagram. I know they're on Facebook as well. Look them up, give Justin a call, and get your car coated. It's day five since I've had ceramic coating done. And that means I get to wash the car today rather than just you know spray it off if it gets a little dirty. I did spray it off once because it rained and my dirt road turned into a mud road. So my car was completely filthy, but the stuff just came right off. You just spray it and it just rinsed right off. And I just could not be happier with how clean this thing it gets, how easy it is to get clean. Another important aspect whenever you're cleaning your car is the drying process. You wanna make sure that you're not scratching the paint whenever you're trying to just get the thing dry. And if you don't dry it, then you're left with water spots all over it. And that's not very attractive. I use a towel that I picked up from Nick Murray's website. It says you can dry your whole car in 90 seconds, I think is what the ad says. I don't know, it probably takes me two minutes, two and a half, something like that. But I bet it's going to be even faster now with a hydrophobic, hydro, hydro, hell, hydra. Hell, hydra. All right, all right, put your arms down, Kaminsky. I bet it's going to be even faster now with the hydrophobic properties of this ceramic coating here. The water is just sheeting off of this thing. Every time that I wash my car, I have in mind that whenever I finish, it's going to look like the car looks now. <laughs> now being after having had the ceramic coat and the, the polish and the all of that good stuff done. But that is not something that you can simply just make happen by washing the car. I talked to Justin about the process to get it to looking like this, and it starts out with a regular car wash. You clean the car, make it look clean, as good as it can get. And then there's a chemical soak and a clay bar. And all of that is to get out all of the iron deposits and fallout and anything else that's hidden in the paint that you can't really tell is there, but you, you know it's keeping the car from getting as clean as it could. My car was just covered in filth that was coming off of it. I had no idea that my car had so much iron deposits in it. If you look in these pictures, you'll see all the pink running down the side and puddled up all over the ground. That's the iron deposits. And I, if I understand correctly, it normally takes about half of a clay bar to do an entire car. Justin used two clay bars on my car. <laughs> it had been at least three years since it had been uh, done. I know my previous owner said he used to uh, clay bar once a year or have it done. And um, I've had the car for three years and have never done it. I bought a clay bar kit when I first bought the car. I think it actually delivered before I even picked up the car. And it's still sitting on the shelf in its packaging uh, because, I don't know, I, I know that I'm not normally afraid to go and try and learn new things, but... I guess when it comes to risking ruining the finish of the car, if you do it wrong, I've been hesitant, to say the least. I know Jay Reed tackled the task on his own. He, he cut and polished and everything on his Boxster that he just sold. So kudos to Jay. But in this case, I wanted to trust someone who does this every day, all day long. Someone who has professional products that can make this thing just as good as showroom new or better. So after all of the impurities and deposits are all stripped from the car, both from the chemical process and from the clay bar mechanical process, next comes cut and polish. You can see all of these swirl marks that don't really show up until you get close or under the right light, and then you see that the car is actually really scratched up. And you probably notice that about your car unless you have had, you know, a cut and polish and ceramic coat recently done to your car. If you go out and shine the light on it, you'll see all those little swirls and imperfections. Well, the cut and polish essentially gets rid of those. It gets The cut gets rid of it, and then the polish comes back 
and buffs it up and makes it shine again. After the cut and polish it's taken care of, then comes the actual ceramic coat. It's applied in a one-step process for the type that Justin used on my car. And there are some that you can do a two-step process for. Mine is supposed to be a two-year coat. And my goodness, if this is not beautiful, I don't know what is. I, I have personally, in my time of owning collector cars, cool cars, I have never made a car look as good as this. <laughs> it's extremely nice. So let's get some beauty shots here. Take a look. see all of the swirl marks are completely gone we had the before shots with the swirls then these after shots there's no swirls just crystal crystal clear and then when you're washing the thing the soap hardly even holds on the soap finds the impurities and latches onto that and everything else it just sheets right off of so for now for the finish of the paint at least I'm totally happy and satisfied and not going to do anything else with it. At some point, I will have the front and rear bumpers resprayed. The rear is actually in good shape with just a few minor ah, imperfections. There's a couple of spots where the water likes to collect whenever you're washing, where the clear coat has started to come loose. So, can you see it? I don't know if you can see it. Now, let's get even closer right here. It was collecting filth underneath the clear coat so I took a razor blade and cut that back just to keep it from being quite so noticeable again step back two or three feet and it's gone that and if you look down underneath this part right here where it collects lots of rock chips and things from these extra wide tires that I have could stand to be refinished and then once it is put some kind of protective coat on there some kind of clear finish maybe a clear bra I think that would be a good way to address that and preserve it down the road. Other things that need to be done still, as far as the finish and the look of the exterior of the car, the wheels need to be powder coated. We looked at those last time, and let's zoom in. You can see that this is starting to peel back in some places, and then there's some discoloration here, and then in the corners, it gets just about impossible to clean all of that out. But step back three feet and they look great. And one last thing that I am going to take care of, not in this episode, but sometime coming up soon, will be the refinishing of the black across here. We want to make sure that that all looks fresh and not chipped away like it is. Well, that takes care of two things off of our checklist that we made last week. So that's 14 left to go. And I think that next time we're going to go ahead and tackle the brakes. Yes, I'm saying it now. I'm going to overcome my anxiety about doing that. I'm going to realize that it's really not that big a deal. People do brake flushes all the time. People change brake lines all the time. So if you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, go ahead and hit that button. I'm always taking care of projects on the car and we have a checklist now. We've only knocked out two out of 16 things. So let's see if we can take care of some more next week. See you then.